In this video, we're going to take a look at some linear programming problems. For linear programming, we'll be given a set of constraints that are in the form of inequalities. So right here are my constraints for this particular problem. The first thing I need to do is graph those constraints and find out where they all overlap or where is the shading all overlap. I've already graphed each of our constraints here and I've color coded them as well. So you can see excuse me. So you can see where the overlapping and the shading falls. And if we notice um, this one for example, y is greater than negative eight, that would be this line right here, negative eight, and greater than is above it, then this one, x is greater than negative four. That means we got x here, or negative 4 here, and going this direction. This one, remember, to graph that, we start at 1, and then we're going to go up 2 to the left 1, or down 2 to the right 1 to get our additional points. And it's less than that, so that's this direction. And finally, negative 6 is our y-intercept there, where we go down 1 over 4, or up 1 and to the left four. So that gets our um, places where the um, shading overlaps and this region that I have shaded in in yellow is called our feasible region. So what we're going to do then is find the vertices of the corners of that feasible region because those are what we're going to use in order to minimize or maximize an objective function. Here's our objective function that we're given. P is equal to 11x minus 2.5y. So what we're going to go ahead and do is first of all find those vertices. I'm going to start down here. This point right there, if we go over 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's 4 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 4, 7 is that first point there on the bottom. Oops, let me switch something here. 4, 7. Oops. Oh, just struggling. Holy smokes. Okay, here we go. 4, 7. That's our first point. My pen is not cooperating with me. Okay. So that's my first point right down here. I'm just going to make my way around that triangle um, clockwise. So this point right here would be at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, and then down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that point is negative 4, 5, negative 5. Then my last vertice, I'm back four again, and I go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right there. So that would be at the point negative four and nine. Okay, once I have my vertices, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute each of them in to my objective function, which in this case is 11x minus 2.5y and it asks me to minimize it so I'm gonna be looking for the smallest value of P so here we go I'm gonna go ahead and fill those things in and I'll just go ahead right over here so first one is 4 7 so I'm gonna fill that in 11 times 4 minus 2.5 times 7 okay and 11 times 4 is 44 minus 2.5 times 7, well, 2.5 times 7, let's see, let's just grab my handy dandy calculator here and see what we get, just to be safe, I think I might know what it is, but I don't want to goof up, 17.5, okay, so I have 44 minus 17.5, and then finally do that subtraction, 44 minus 17.5, which gives us 26.5. Okay, so that is for 
R47. So I'm just going to write here P. I'm going to make a sort of a little table like so. And P for this one is 26.5. Okay, so let's go ahead and put in the second one. For that one, we have negative 4. So 11 times negative 4, then minus 2.5 times negative 5. So do that multiplication. Oh. Negative 44 minus, this is both negative, so 2.5 times negative 5, 2.5 times 5, give us 12.5. And since it's minus minus, or it's uh, two negatives being multiplied, it's going to be plus 12.5. So then, do that combination there, subtract 44, and we get 31.5. This is equal to negative 31.5. So my P for that one. Then finally I fill in my last one. And again I'm just going to switch colors here so it's clear what's going on. And we get 11 times negative 4 minus 2.5 times 9. 11 times negative 4 is still negative 4. 44, then we're going to take 2.5, multiply it by 9, so 2.5 times 9 gives me 22.5, so minus 22.5, and then finally, negative 44 minus 22.5 well, gives me negative 66.5, I could have done that without a calculator. Okay, negative 66.5. So, I want to minimize my objective function, so then I look for the smallest value that comes out. Well, which is the smallest of these three? This last one right here. So, the minimum value for my objective function, given these constraints, is going to be negative 66.5. Let's take a look at another one. Again, I put together, we were given some constraints, and it asks us to maximize this objective function given this set of constraints. So this one, we have a little bit different shape here. It's the kind of a triangle, but it's been cut off on the bottom. So that's going to give us four points that we're going to start with. So let's first start by listing those vertices. I'm going to start in the lower right here. This is going to be at the point 1, and then negative 1, 2, 3. So 1, negative 3. My next one is going to be just moving over clockwise around there, over here. So that would fall at negative 1, 2, 3, and down 1, 2, 3. So that would be at negative 3. Oh, this is just being a bugger tonight. Holy cow. Negative 3, negative 3. Then, working my way around here, this one is going to be back here at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and positive 1. So 8. 1, that's that one. Then back up here to the top, we're at 1, and that point is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we're at 1, 10. Okay, so now we go ahead and just like we did before we're gonna substitute these in to my objective function right here and it wants us to maximize so I'm looking for the largest value that we get out so let's take that first one one negative three so I have three times
times 1, because 1 is x, plus 7 times negative 3, which is going to give us, this is 3 plus a negative 21, and 3 plus a negative 21 is going to be negative 18. Okay, so we've got negative 18 for this first one. Again, I could make a table if I want. I didn't really leave myself room up there, so I'll just do it like this. So that one brings out negative 18. Let's take the next one here. Go ahead and put in negative 3 and negative 3. So we have 3 times negative 3 plus 7 times negative 3. There we have negative 9 minus 21, which is going to give us negative 30. So that's my value for that one, negative 30. Then I'm going to put in this one, 8, 1. So put in 8, 3 times 8, plus 7 times 1. Three times eight, of course, is 24, plus seven, which gives us 31. All right, so we've got that. Then, finally, I'm gonna put in the last point, which is 110. So, I go ahead and do that. Three times one, plus seven times 10. Three times one, of course, is three plus 7 times 10, which is 70, gives me 73. So my objective function's value is 73 at the point 110. So if we look, again, it asks us to maximize. So I'm looking for the largest value that came out of my objective function for those points at the vertices of that feasible region. Remember, that area shaded in by all my inequalities is called the feasible region. In this case, the maximum is this, 110. If we were looking for the minimum, if it asked us to minimize it, then we would look for the smallest value that comes out, and in this case, it would be negative 30. So, linear programming stuff, we're given a set of constraints that are inequalities. We start by graphing those. If you have questions on graphing those inequalities, I would encourage you to check out uh, one of my other videos where we look at some graphing some inequalities and that might be helpful then once we do that we find an area where they're all overlapping that's called our feasible region then we pick out the vertices of whatever figure that is in this case we had sort of that cut off triangle shape um, also known as uh, quadrilateral four sides and then we put each of those into our objective function which we're asked to either maximize or minimize and see which one either comes out the largest for maximizing or the smallest for minimizing i hope that was helpful keep working hard on your math i know you can do a great job